physical intelligence as being more fundamental, really influencing emotional intelligence and cognitive intelligence has a tremendous impact on managers, on leadership, on our competencies, our interaction with other people in organizations, in our life, our relationships, and ultimately the direction our life takes. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick Nusky. I'm the host. I'm also the luckiest man in the world because I'm on the line today with Dr. Martina Wagner. Welcome to the show, Dr. Wagner. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, um, I've looked at your bio, and if I might, can I call you Martina? Would that be okay? Absolutely, yes. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Now, I've looked at your bio and there's a lot here. And on today's call, for everybody who's on the, on the show with us, we're going to be taking a deep dive into uh, Dr. Wagner's new book, Physical Intelligence. Now, there's a, there's a few components to this and uh, we need to understand each and every one of them. And certainly, I am not the expert in this field, but uh, what we like to do, uh, Dr. Wagner, is to really um, step back a little bit and learn a bit about you and your personal life first before we go into the nuts and bolts of today's call. I'm wondering, do you have much of a, I guess, a, a recreational side to you? Do you like doing sports? What, what's your thing outside of the work, workplace? Actually, I love to try out everything there is possibly. I'm, I'm all into new experiences, but I do have a, a number of hobbies that cover a lot of different sports. I love to ski, uh, love to swim, hike, uh, explore different types of landscapes all around the world, as well as, well as the cultures, obviously, the people. And um, then I ride motorcycles, so I also have that part of, uh, inside of me. Very and nice. I'm, I'm a dancer. I do ballroom, salsa, West Coast, all of these things. So love cultural events, theater, everything, pretty much uh, lots of different inspirations. So I never spend any time in front of the tv (laughs) watch a movie here and there but uh, other than that i'm always busy exploring thank you for sharing now a couple of important things here motorbikes what type of motorbike do you own i actually have two one is um, a very fast one a yamaha r6 uh, that i use to mostly ride around the twisties here in the Bay Area and also wine country. And then I have a, a Buell Ulysses, which is more for the the longer hauls to be able to look at the fantastic scenery and be able to enjoy this this country and the, the wonderful things that it offers. That is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I love to learn a bit more about the private sides of people because there are two sides to this and this is very much going to dovetail into this conversation quite nicely, I think. But first of all, I'd just like to touch on your experience as a, as a martial artist. Tell us a little bit about your experience with this. Well, I actually was never really interested in martial arts per se, in terms of like the sparring or Mm -hmm. or fighting with people. I Mm -hmm. mean, I never had that urge. I'm a very pacifistic type of personality. (laughs) Uh, But I had this at at some point in time in my life, um, I had this this urge to explore that whole area specifically for the area for um, looking at how can you defend yourself because Mm. i traveled a whole lot to latin america always traveled by myself and uh, i i like to be in all kinds of different places as well when i go on vacation i'm not limiting myself to cities but i want to be exploring area different types of areas so it's always good to kind of like know what you can do what you can't do and so this piqued my interest but there was another component and we're going to touch on this later on when we talk more about physical intelligence, but there was something inside of me that was looking for expression. And I searched around in different areas to really gain access to that because I didn't really know what it was. And as I came across this very specific school led by Daniel Johnson, he's teaching about self-mastery. And that is a very different training than you have in your average martial arts class, where it's more about the the techniques, the sparring, Mm -hmm. things like that. 
Yeah, that's very interesting, isn't it? I, I wonder, uh, the word discipline seems to pop up into my mind. How was it for your, uh, I guess, your um, physical state and as well as uh, the discipline that you've taken away from it? And do you think that any of those core skills have transferred into the life that you live today? Well, I've always been a pretty disciplined individual in terms of learning. I mean, that's how you get to a PhD. And of course. Also, all of the training that went into um, the executive positions and leadership uh, in, in healthcare that I've held. So there's obviously a lot of learning associated with this. But this, the word discipline is actually an interesting one that you can stretch into different areas because mm -hmm. self-mastery is really starting to understand the facets of yourself, your personality and also components. I mean, your mind, your emotions, your physical body, how does all of this connect? And how can you actually start to not only understand it, but get to the level of having a certain level of control? And this is where the discipline comes in. So the level of control that we're able to access and, and gain using certain types of techniques actually will allow us to discipline our mind in terms of just like really blanking out thinking or really getting control of emotions that we want to control and we want to be able to subside so there that is an, a different aspect of discipline that perhaps comes to mind first and I'd love to uh, take a bit more of a dive into that with when we talk about your wonderful new book, of which I love the cover, might I just add. <laughs> I, I look at this and, I, and you're obviously heading up the Artes Humanis, um, the consulting and training firm that originated the Seven Minds program worldwide. I think for the sake of context, could we talk a little bit about what that means and, and what that service is? So the, the Seven Minds are the framework that I've developed based on the self mastery training, because I started to look at what changes have I've observed through the, the training myself in, in terms of my leadership capabilities, changes to my mind, changes to my emotion and my physical body. And also what have other students observed in, in that whole realm. And I, I found that there are very specific areas that you are able to dive into and start making changes. So in, in the area of mental, in the mental area, if you mm -hmm. will, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about attention and focus. And we know, for instance, that our attention span or population's attention span gets shortened or has been getting shortened tremendously because of people's um, habits in terms of consuming digital media, surfing. Um, many people only have like a few seconds of attention before they need another stimulus, before they think of something else. And uh, it's a tendency as well that we continue to reinforce with all of the things that are happening around us. I mean, more and more digitalization, mm -hmm. being connected to phones and, and all kinds of different media 24 seven, we continuously shape our mind and our attention and our focus in that direction. So being able to counteract that and being able to move in the direction where you are exploring that concept of what is focus and attention and actually start working on that mental capability again that mm -hmm. is quite an experience it's 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 fascinating how you are able to really get in there and also develop a feeling for what that actually is and what it means it's a fascinating topic isn't it look um digi the digital landscape nowadays is omnipresent in all directions at all at all times isn't it it's very you, you see people that cannot or struggle to turn off their mobile phones, disconnect from the television. What do you say and how do you manage that sort of, uh, I guess, experience for someone? How do you help them, I guess, digital detox? Well, we basically have to look at what's happening uh, underneath of the behavior in terms of being tied to a phone or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, or your TV or, or whatever digital media. It's basically the same biochemistry as happens in an addiction. 
and you can you can see the i mean people are talking about dopamine hits it's it's basically mm -hmm. the cascade of things that are happening underneath that has very addiction like type of um characteristics so this is where we need to get into and this is where we're going to be starting starting to talk about patterns mm -hmm. because uh everything that is happening inside of ourselves in in the subconscious arena can be explained by mental emotional and physiological patterns that reside in your unconscious and through the choices that you make in terms of okay i'm going to spend this amount of time with my phone i'm mm -hmm. going to turn it on the moment i wake up and uh, basically be tied to it uh, all, all, day. The, all day long and <laughs> keep on checking it yeah. uh, you actually establish patterns within yourself first not necessarily on purpose but just because because of the behavior just because you're doing it and then they become ingrained in your mental structure. And then all of a sudden it becomes a, a habit and, and much more than a habit, this kind of like addiction, because now you've trained your mind to want to look at the phone. And if you don't have the phone available anymore, then you're missing something. And that's where you notice then this, this uh, phenomenon of addiction or, or people even having, um, phantom type of phones ringing around themselves and oh, things wow. like that. It's, it's really interesting what happens, but it, it really points to the concept of neuroplasticity. Uh, we all know about it, that the mind is constantly changing and mm -hmm. it's changing in function of how we're using it. The problem is that people don't make a conscientious decision in terms of how they want to change their mind. They basically just do things and then the mind changes along with it. And then they wonder, oh, okay, why is this happening now? Well, you you are basically the source of, of what's been happening now uh, with you, but you might not have made that choice conscientiously, but it didn't happen anyway. Yes, thank you for sharing. Now, um, Dr. Muerte, I'd love to talk a little bit about the genesis of this wonderful book, Physical Intelligence and Introduction. Um, what led you to the decision to actually put this book together? Well, uh, it's actually the first of many books that I have to write, I have to say. And uh, this first book is really meant to be an introduction to the topic. As you said, um, physical intelligence is not something that people are aware of, even though when you start talking about cognitive intelligence and emotional intelligence, and you said, well, uh, there is actually a physical component in that, <laughs> people go like, oh, yeah, really? absolutely. <laughs> there, there absolutely is, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I researched a whole lot about physical intelligence, and there are actually a few groups out there that also have, call physical intelligence or, or have written books and, and have been talking about physical intelligence. And so I, I felt it's absolutely necessary that I put a context around how do I or how do we see physical intelligence, what is the definition, what does it encompass and most importantly and this is where we kind of like differ a little bit from from other folks is how do we access it and how can we make changes in it and what are the benefits coming out of this because at the end of the day uh just like with emotional intelligence we know there are trainings there are assessments there are all of these things out there because it has been shown that physical i'm sorry that emotional intelligence really has an impact on workplace behaviors and also at the end of the day, effectiveness of leadership. And physical intelligence as being more fundamental, really influencing emotional intelligence and cognitive intelligence has a tremendous impact on managers, on leadership, on our competencies, our interaction with other uh, people in organizations, in our life, our relationships, and ultimately the direction our life takes. So when people are looking to, I guess, uh, build up their, um, I guess, the balance between uh, IQ, EQ and, and PQ now, is, is there a, a set format that they can go about this or is everybody different and you have to, uh, I guess, um, use it on a case by case basis? How do you, how do you assess somebody in this regard? Yeah, that's actually an excellent question. So it, um, so there's, two things that play into this. First of all, the commonality is 
we're all human beings having having a physical body mm -hmm. and at least on a on a fundamental level there are similarities in terms of like how we can leverage the body to influence our physical intelligence and this is where we have very specific tools that are actually movement based and combined with breath that allow you to start taking control of your emotions and your your cognitive thinking which is actually something that is rather unusual and and therefore pretty novel mm -hmm. but then there is the component of all of us having different types of experiences and also conditioning throughout our lives and this is what we all struggle and wrestle with and specifically if you're talking about personal leadership is something that we need to examine in more detail and get access to and this is where we're leveraging if you will the the fundamental approach to really get very personal and be able to work with the individual to really start helping them to first of all develop an awareness of these patterns the mindset and what they're actually dealing with their self schema and allow them to start tapping into these patterns starting to recognize where the limitations are to fundamentally allow them to break them and instead establish new patterns that are really a very important and strong fund foundation for the new competencies and skills they want to establish. You talked a moment ago about self. I wonder um, what's the relevance here because of self-awareness because a lot of people tend to go about their daily lives both professionally and privately almost as if they're on autopilot. Is it, is it important to you know take control and make a cognitive decision? Hey, look, I'm aware of what's happening around me. And if somebody's not good at doing that, how would they go about learning that skill of self-awareness? Well, let me ask you, let's, let me ask you a question. How much time do you actually think people spend in their heads thinking versus actually being present? Oh, majority of the time I would have to say for a number of people, I'm not sure it would be everyone, but um, I've met some fairly aware people. Um, but you know, I, I think we can tip the balance a little bit more in, in the self-awareness um, favor, couldn't we? Absolutely, yeah. So our, our statistics say that about more than 80%, we either spend time in the past or in the future because we tend to fill the day with a lot of cognitive type of activities. We do to-do lists, we think about things, we work on stuff, we have projects. And every time our mind has to go either to the past, to memories, to knowledge, or to the future for planning. And so we spend a whole lot of time being in our mind in all of these different faculties, mm -hmm. which means that we're actually not here. In the now. But here is the only time that we can actually create an impact on something. See, these are made up constructs, aren't they? The, the, the notion of time. And, you know, we, we, we look at the past and we think about the fears that we have because of things we've experienced in the past, where in actual fact, nothing has changed. We're in the same spot as we were before. We've just, uh, I guess, neuro, you know, the neuroscience component of it, we've embedded this memory um, of, a, of, a, of, a, of an event that may not have been fortuitous for us. Um, can we unwind this and unlearn these things? And what are some of the mechanisms and the tools that you suggest using when people are really suffering like this? Yes. So first of all, I wanted to come back for a moment to touch on the self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Because self-awareness for people is mostly just thinking about themselves and trying to understand why certain things are happening to them mm -hmm. or who they are and about their interactions with other folks. So on a physical intelligence level, we actually go into a self-awareness where you are starting to experience yourself. And we teach, uh, a we teach an approach where you start connecting with your center. And this is where you're starting to really fundamentally understand who you are. But that is actually the version of you that if you will, in lack of a better way of describing it is almost like void of this conditioning and all of these different patterns uh -huh. the fears and the pains and all of these things that we've accumulated as coping strategies throughout our life because of 
needing to avoid pain or deal with very unfortunate circumstances, as you say. Mm -hmm. So through this process of centering, we gain access to the place that allows us to first and foremost see and understand these patterns, but also to gain, it's a process of gaining control and gaining access to the patterns in order to change them, to break them. And this is a very, very powerful process where you're able to really address conditions like people being depressed, people being in fear or anxiety of different types of, of uh, um, things that are happen that are embedded in their subconscious that they mm -hmm, sometimes mm -hmm. don't even know where they come from or what this is all about. So the whole process, and that's why I call it also self-awareness, is really bringing that up to the surface letting you understand what is actually impacting you and allow to to move it outside of you and and really improve the quality of your life that way because you're no longer bogged down with the negative thinking with the fear with the anxiety you let all of this go and what remains is actually a very pleasant and very joyful state of being um and that's why I always refer to it as you're increasing your quality of your life in, in ways that you can't even imagine uh, at this point in time that is even possible. A couple of things that have come out for this for me that I'm thinking about, um, you know, when you get the boot, uh, the goosebumps on your arms and you, you just have a tingling and you have a sense. Um, when I think about physical intelligence, I think about intuition. What part does intuition play in physical intelligence and reading your body signals? Okay, so there's reading body signals, there's intuition, mm -hmm. and there, there's, there's a few things so there. different type of concept. So I would say starting with body signals, you as you start tuning into yourself, mm -hmm. you start to become more and more in tune and more and more connected to your physical body. Uh, I, I want to say that a lot of people nowadays are not connected to their physical body and they don't realize what they're actually doing to their physical body, to their physiology. Just talk about stress and uh, um, exposing yourself to different types of environments that people get so used to that they don't even don't realize anymore how stressful they are for their body and how many reactions the the body actually is is unleashing which are unhealthy for the person at the end yeah. of the day so getting in touch with that first of all lets you be cognizant and let's be more aware of what is happening happening to you at a physiological level and which is also a first stage to allowing you to become aware of problems that could really be serious uh or could have serious consequences down the line so it's definitely that level of connection that is a very important facet of that and really understanding more what is going on inside of yourself again tuning into emotions tuning into your thinking realizing how the two are connected and then also how that all works with the physical body and then there is this whole topic of intuition and mm -hmm. and some, uh, some people also describe it kind of like as inner wisdom, you're getting connected to consciousness. That is a very interesting topic and it depends very much on the belief of, of the individual, but certainly starting to focus on your physical intelligence, you gain more access. You really get connected directly to that through your center and you really perceive it as something substantial. You don't have any doubts anymore. It's something that you can trust 100%. And this is also where all of our discussion around meaning and purpose, using that process to really start understanding who you are, where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do around here, and, and how that all connects with everything that you're doing, in a, be it in, in a workplace or in a relationship. Thank you for sharing. This has just been such a wonderful conversation. I'd love to um, look at your day personally. What does a typical daily routine look like for you to, I guess, um, reset yourself, realign yourself with all of these things that we've spoken about today? I wonder if you could share a little bit about what your day looks like for us. 
So it's, uh, it's actually a very interesting question because I don't think that I have typical days right. um, because there's just so many different things that I constantly deal with. But I want to speak to the a routine or something to, to reset, I mean, what, what you just mentioned. Mm-hmm. So what um, I have very distinctive times that I set aside to really do different techniques, mm-hmm. uh, physical intelligence techniques. But uh, from my perspective, it is really not so much of an aspect of like, okay, I have a very specific routine during the day. But it is more the philosophy and the concept of actually changing your whole life philosophy that actually your entire life, everything that you do, everything that you do during the day actually becomes part of the process of getting in touch with your physical intelligence. So pretty much every breath that I'm taking, if I go outside and I connect with nature if I speak to another individual, just like right now Mm -hmm. with yourself, there is an element of connection. There is an element of being connected to that part so that it is in essence, a constant process from which I'm learning and I'm also developing and changing and pulling this all together. Do you find that uh, there's a, a moment of reflection to consolidate the experience throughout any given day? Is there any sort of, I wouldn't say meditation per se, but at least a a reflection? Oh, absolutely. And it it happens constantly and it happens, uh, if you will, in in just the moments where you're creating space for it. Mm -hmm. And this is really what I tried to hint out earlier when we were talking about the mind and and quieting down the mind and, and getting rid of all of that noise of thoughts that are constantly streaming into the mind (laughs) so now i'm actually in a place where my mind is really quiet and so it actually creates it has that space for that reflection or or connection to the intuition new ideas Mm -hmm. things that i want to say things that i'm i'm noticing things that I'm, i'm picking up coming into my realm of consciousness that i can start acting on so again, that's why I said it is it is um, something that I would have never imagined before I actually went into this whole process mm-hmm. because it is such a different way of, of being. And it is actually such a different mental state as well that you have continuously throughout the day and that uh, also allows you, no matter if you're in a totally stressful situation, to maintain your calm to connect to something that allows you to regenerate energy if you if you should need it to or connect energy to bring up your energy to be able to use it like for instance in martial arts in some uh, some days we would come into the class and master johnson would just like throw us right into a sparring yep situation and before you even know it <laughs> i mean you, you just have to like basically turn drop of a hat and all of a sudden you you're like you're not even warmed up, you're not mentally prepared. So that just really teaches you, number one, the potential of your mind in terms of being able to how fast we can react, how fast we can change things if we train our mind to be there. And we're there in that moment, in that present moment, ready 100% immediately able to engage to immediately go. in in a position to bring up our energy to be able to fight with somebody so this is a, a very different um, if you will approach and mindset but that i've used in presentations that i had to give to senior leaders or that i used when i was traveling to latin america and had to get up in front of an audience of uh, several hundred people and had to give my presentation in spanish and just like had to be on even though i was jet lagged or i didn't sleep or i was not in the perfect physical condition you had to be ready to go now i I, you were talking a bit about leaders a moment ago i was wondering what type of uh, individuals do you work with do you work on one-to-ones do you coach uh group settings what's what are your services constructed like configured like well actually so i i uh, i'm a certified executive coach i Mm -hmm. work one-on-one with individuals but um 
the offering from Artis Humanis is really to have different leadership development programs customized and designed for different types of audiences. So we have a physical intelligence program that will um, offer an possibility to learn about physical intelligence and get into it and learn about the benefits that it offers for the whole workplace environment that comes along with the assessments as well, understanding where exactly the individual is, what they need to work on. And then uh, we have programs for managers and then also specifically for leaders that want to work on the personal leadership component. And we also have programs for women specifically because women also have like a different angle and mm -hmm. different needs to yep. specifically looking at leadership and uh, that whole topic of self-awareness, self-esteem and confidence and self-value is a very big part of that training that we're looking at and really understanding where women are at in that particular aspect and how physical intelligence and the seven minds program can help them to make very specific um, differences, very specific changes that will really yield them impactful results. Thank you for sharing. Do you, you talked about working one on one, but do you also have like a larger settings that you work in like workshops and things like that? What are yes, the other sort yes, of modes? Absolutely. So the leadership development programs are workshops, uh, presentations, and courses mm -hmm. that we teach to organizations of, of um, several different sizes. Yeah. Well, you've obviously piqued a lot of people's interests who are on the show with us today. I'm wondering if you can, um, Martina, share with um, the My Future Business audience where they're going to go um, to find you, to start working with you, and what is the process um, that they will go through when they do connect with you? So uh, first of all, um, please visit my website. It's www.artishumanis, so the human arts, artishumanis.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn and the various social media outlets uh, if, if folks want to connect with me. And the, the process really to start working with me is to first and foremost understand where the client is at and what their goals are and then really determining the right way and the right type of approach, leveraging our different types of tools and programs to really get them to that very specific goals and, and some uh, very tangible results they want to achieve. And thank you again for sharing. This is the gold standard um, for this line of work. If you want to learn more, I will be doing as I normally do, making sure that all of the links back to um, the work that is being done by Dr. Martina Wagner and her team. Um, with all that being said, this has just been such a fascinating talk, a discussion about this wonderful topic. Thank you so very much for spending some time with me on the My Future Business show today. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, it's it's a topic to, to discuss for a long time. There are many, many facets to it. So thank you so much for, for the conversation. And it was a pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.